That's here. It made it. Alright guys, welcome back to the CD's Automotive Garage YouTube channel. And today, we finally got some good old S10 flavored content for you. That's right, we're finally getting back to the old S10. It has came a long time waiting. And uh, I believe it's finally time now to get this old work truck fixed up. So it's a good, reliable daily again. Now, this has been on the channel many, many times before. I'll link the first video of this truck on the channel in the bottom for you to check that out if you had never seen it before. This is my 1985 GMC Sierra S15. It's not a Sonoma. I had many times people in that video comment that it was a Sonoma. It is not. It is, in fact, a GMC Sierra S15. The Sonoma didn't come out until later. Someone that was not in 1985, as far as I remember. But this is not that. Anyway, so it's got a 93 front end support on it that I swapped from the junkyard. And aftermarket wheels, Camaro wheels, 80s style. And uh, got chrome mirrors on her now, tinted windows, rain guards, all that good stuff. It is the 2.8 carbureted V6 with a 4 speed automatic. Now, about five or so years ago, I want to say, give or take, when I first picked this truck up, uh, it was not actually not far from the house, and the lady was wanting somewhere around, I think she had it listed for like 800 bucks. Had a 2.5 four-banger in it, the Iron Duke, because everybody loves. I don't, because they blow heads like no tomorrow. Every one of them I've ever had had that issue. It must be just something, internal failure is just very common. But anyway... I was, you know, gun hold to save it and got her down to 400 bucks for the whole truck. Of course, it was all primer gray, as you'll see in that video. So we got it home, and uh, I began to tear into it, figure out what was wrong with it, because at the time, they said it was blown head gasket, but I wasn't sure. But, in fact, actually was. So I began to rebuild that motor, but it actually, I gave up. I tried to find a 4.3, couldn't find one, and that's when I found... On marketplace or actually it was before marketplace this was well it's kind of in between marketplace starting out so there wasn't much content on marketplace that you could find as far as vehicles and all that stuff so it was actually on craigslist a guy had listed the whole truck exactly like mine and uh long bed same year and everything down to the just everything was the same went down to check it out and the guy wanted 350 bucks for the motor, transmission, wiring harness, radiator, everything you pretty much see in this engine bay to make it run and drive into my truck. Yeah, I lived about an hour and a half away. I get there, the truck's already running, you know, and I'm like, oh, that's not good. That's mistake number one. And uh, you take it down the road, drives fine, shifts fine, you know, no issues. I don't hear any noises, not even a lift or tick, nothing. Now, it was cold that morning. It was raining when we were checking the whole truck out and uh, driving it drove it down a couple times parked it i turned it off let it sit for a second fired it right back up it ran fine no smoke i mean it just ran like it should no issues at all that i could tell so i told him i wanted it i came back in a week to get it 350 bucks later get it home and completely degrease it it was full i mean like a couple inches thick of just oil and grime all over the front of the whole engine itself. I knew then there should have been something wrong with that much grease and oil buildup that it had some major leaks. So I went ahead and I went through, I put belts on it, I believe I put a water pump on it, and what else did I do? The uh, rear main seal was replaced, valve cover gaskets, intake, all that good stuff, and exhaust manifold, EGR block off, deleted all the emission stuff, I painted the engine block, put a new carburetor on it, and uh, set the timing correctly because it was off. And I did some other odd end things just to get it to where when it was set in the truck that I wouldn't have to touch it again as far as like the rear main seal, the front seal, and the transmission, all that good stuff. Now, somewhere around four or some years later now, the truck, the engine itself has had it. Now, when I stuck this in here, 
I put it in here before I put the transmission hooked up because I wanted to see how it ran. And I ran it off just regular 10W30 oil, no additives at all. I just figured, you know, that'll be thick enough, it'll work. And put it in here, fired it up. When it got hot, it started making this noise around 1500, 2000 RPM, this rattle noise. It's like, that ain't good. So I had a friend of mine come over. We checked it out. He said that uh, it sounded like there was a flywheel or flex plate that, you know, that had a crack or something in it causing that noise. He said, put the transmission in it and see if it still does it. So I put the transmission in it, and it still kind of did it. It wasn't as bad, but I still wasn't happy with it, you know, and he said, I'd just drive it and just leave it like it is. And, well, I really needed the truck, so I figured I'll just leave it, you know, I'll find another motor in the meantime and uh or something else and stick in its place well i never did and it's been you know four some years later now um it's kind of crazy i've hauled a lot with this thing I, I really a lot i've towed with it hauled a lot it's a long bed there's a the lowe's gravel i've actually hauled two huge bags in the back of that truck it squatted like heck but i mean it pulled it with no issues at all no noises, no nothing, but the engine's way worse now. The oil pressure's not great, and when it gets hot, it used to have somewhere around close to 80 PSI when it was cold. Now it has 60 PSI when it's cold, and when it's hot up to temperature, uh, the oil pressure drops down to somewhere around probably 5 to 10 PSI. We've got bucket seats in the truck now. Somewhere around, let's see here right where that first little white line and the second little white line it stays right in there in that area when it's hot uh, at idle i don't have good oil pressure anymore and i used to have a mechanical gauge in this truck and that was around 10 to 15 psi maybe 20 on a good day back then when i first put it together now that's got to be probably around 5 to 10 psi if i had to guess so the engine has an engine noise it's gotten way worse the bottom end main bearings are shot the crank wobbles like this when it's running i can literally take my hand move the crank pulley like this back and forth there's that much play because the timing chain is so shot there's a bunch of blow by now the compression is not great i checked that on all six cylinders and it's somewhere around 95 psi is the highest and it drops down from 95 to about 90 I mean, I guess that's not too bad, but 95 PSI, that's kind of wore out. It should be way up more than that. It should be around like 120, 130-ish. So, I'm guessing it's got higher miles. Uh, it was a five-digit odometer like mine is. My truck's got 146,000. It says 45, but I'm guessing 146. And if I'm not mistaken, his had like 88,000. So, it could have been 188,000. And I've put probably 35,000 miles on this in the course of about four years or so-ish. So it's it's pretty much had it. Like I said, the blow-by is gone. I mean, it's I've got to keep these filters in stock because it's so bad. It plugs them up. Last time I changed it was just recently. You can see the staining from the blow-by. The last time I fil changed this little filter... It was so bad that it was pushing out here into the filter housing. And uh, it was all the way around all the way over here. Just milky stuff. Looked like uh, chocolate milkshake or something like that. It was just nasty. And that's the first time it's happened that bad. Now it's plugged them up several times. And like I said, I just keep them in stock. Change them out when I notice that they're filling up. I tried the breather filter inside the valve cover. One of those, well, it plugged that sucker up and it started leaking out on the exhaust and burning it while I was driving it. And that's not a pleasant smell. So, went back to the original type. The PCB valve sometimes will suck up stuff into the carburetor, which is not great. You know, that's another reason why I don't like driving it much anymore. So, all in all, you know, just to get to the point, you know, it don't have good oil pressure. It's got blow-by, the compression's shot, there's bottom-end noise. It just pretty much needs a whole entire rebuild. And I'm just not going to do it. There's, you can't finally, you can't hardly find any parts for these anymore. And if you do, it's probably not cheap. And there's not much stuff online to find specs and whatever have you to figure out how to put everything back. So ever since, you know, like I said, this engine's been in this truck. I've been trying to hunt for another one. 4.3, 
Of course, the 4.3, I need the wiring harness, the transmission, because it's not the same as the 60 degree. It won't work. Bolt pattern is different. Uh, the fuel lines from it, <clears throat> they go from the uh, main fuel uh, rail down here. They come out. The earlier Model 4.3s had them where they came out, come up here, and then up to the TBI. The older or the later model style that came up the uh, fuel rail or frame came off up the transmission and in the back of the motor to the throttle body. I can't use those because my fuel lines come up down here. So it has to be the earlier model 4.3, which is hard to find. So with uh, all that in place, uh, somebody that I know hit me up and said, I got something for you. Oh yeah, that's right. Another 2.8. Why not? So what better than ever than a little bit of an upgrade 2.8. So a buddy of mine named James hit me up. And he said, I got something for you you might be interested in. And I'm like, what's that? And that's this 1983 Chevrolet S10 pickup two-wheel drive short bed. Three-speed automatic 2.8 carbureted V6. I know, I know another carbureted 2.8. Why not? Some people call me crazy and probably the only one to ever work on these or touch them because once they blow up or mess up, people chunk these things at the curve and throw in an LS or a 350 and call it a day. But not this guy. I think there's at least a chance to bring this thing back and to keep it going. The engine, I don't think is that old. I believe it's a crate motor and I'll fully explain everything. So please don't skip it because you're going to miss a lot of details about it. So long story short, they were driving it, and he noticed coolant loss, so he topped it off. It went down again. Then it started mixing, and it was overfilling the oil pan so bad that it was dumping it out on the ground. So I was like, that's not good. And if I'm not mistaken, they had the oil changed at least once, and then it mixed again, and he parked it. Or it could be vice versa. So they parked it to the curb, and... About four months later, now it's in my hands, and I'm going to pull this engine and transmission from this truck, turn around, stick it into my pickup. Carburetor is dated, remanufactured, 7-30 of 2019. So I'm assuming that when that was replaced, that's when everything else was done to the whole engine itself. So what I've noticed, she's got headers, headman headers, they're long tube headers. Dual Flowmaster 40 series exhaust. It's got a brand new radiator, belts, water pump, timing cover, front seal, rear main seal, harmonic balancer, valve cover's been painted. Everything's got this like uh, powder coated finish, beautiful color. Uh, the distributor and all that stuff is new, alternator, the ignition coil, I believe the starter as well. Intake's been done, hoses, all that good stuff. Pretty much everything you could think of has probably been replaced or gone through. Now, off camera, I've went ahead and I replaced the oil cap. You know, it has the standard tall and it bolts right here, two 10 millimeter bolts. It stands up real tall. I don't like those. I delete those every time because a lot of moisture builds up in there and rust and then it sends it back down into the valve train and I just don't want that. So, I deleted that. It had an EGR valve and I also deleted one of those because... That's just there's no need for that not on something this old that's carbureted and the port over here at the back and i'm just going to show you on my spare uh intake that i got because it's better this way better lighting so i took the cap off egr valve i got from this one they had a cap literally on that intake on that engine right here there's supposed to be a nipple sticking up to where it gets vacuum to the hvac inside the truck itself so when you turn on your ac or your heat, whatever, defrost, so it gets vacuumed to open up the blend doors inside the dash. Well, they, in fact, had that guy capped off. <clears throat> so I put the one back on here that's supposed to be on here. Put the little T fitting in. It's got a, uh, I think this is like a vacuum ball inside, or not a vacuum ball, but a chick valve. So that way, it gets vacuumed like it's supposed to do. You got your main line that goes in the firewall, but this one's actually longer because it has a big old check ball over here, canister ball. It's two lines going to it, but it pretty much serves the same identical thing as my pickup. Now I've deleted all the emissions on mine, but it still serves the same purpose. You've got the vacuum ball here, the big old vacuum ball, one vacuum line. 
that runs all the way around to that fitting. It's actually right here. Now you see mine's shorter, the line that goes into the firewall. His is a little bit longer, so that is why it has a check ball over here in the fender. Now I don't know if mine's missing that because everything was different being a 2.5, not a 2.8. But I pretty much rehooked and redone everything and hooked it up exactly like it's supposed to be. And my theory is what's going on here is the guy that had this done or he done it himself. When they capped that off, vacuum built up so bad that it blew out the intake manifold gaskets because these are very common for failure. When they do fail, you'll have the oil and coolant mixture, which is what this one's doing. Now, I, like I said, refixed all that. But it's going to have to come apart and be fixed. I found some bolts that were loose to the uh, intake. Another thing I found, this thing runs way too rich, way too rich. Somebody adjusted this wrong. I don't know what they've done, but it needs to be kind of just uh, retuned itself. So I capped these off. They had one of those um, aftermarket, or not aftermarket, but a actual sending unit for a later model TBI temperature sensor for the ECM you don't need that for this I'm guessing he couldn't find a cap off so he just stuck this in there or he was thinking about wiring it up I don't know they have one of these on here missions bull crap so I broke that off capped those two ports off because we don't need that no more this one's for the idiot light inside you're supposed to have one if it has a gauge this is what this is for I'm guessing he hooked that up but none of the lights work on the inside as far as temperature. They don't light up when you turn the key on, and they don't light up when you uh, start the truck up. Uh, the only thing that lights up is the oil pressure, the brake light, and I believe you're just your seatbelt light. And that's about it. So like I said, the intake bolts were loose. Some of them were. The ones that I could get to, however. So the intake's going to have to come off. The timing cover is another big one for these, if you didn't know. The oil pan and the timing cover have to meet together at the very bottom. There is literally two bolts, I believe they're like 10 millimeter, very small, that actually bolt in the very bottom through the oil pan straight up to the timing cover. And you've got to put a good bit of sealant between the block, the oil pan, and the timing cover so it seals right there. You can see all the uh, messy RTV that's already on it, so somebody's already been in here. But that bolt... And especially that one right there. Literally put a wrench on that one. Took my hand with my finger and just went up that easy. That's how loose they were. Both sides were that way. This side was the same way. And those are main coolant jackets for that timing cover. The water pump as well. If those are not tight, they go through the timing cover. They're pretty long. They go through the water pump all the way to the block uh, to seal up. So... We're going to have to pull the timing cover off, the intake, all that good stuff to replace the gaskets and seals and stuff like that. I'm not going to do a front main seal. It's probably already been done. It doesn't leak. I'm not going to touch it. I am, however, probably going to throw a new water pump on it. I don't know yet at the moment. I may just paint it, put it back on. Same way with the intake. And here's the something fishy that I found here. The gasket for the intake sticks way, way out. I mean, that's, that's a good bit. Never seen the gaskets for these do that, ever. To my 92, 2.8, same exact intake manifold gaskets. But you see, there is absolutely, it stops right there. There's no, it's flush with the block or the heads. So, and the same thing over here. Kind of weird that that's happening. Uh, something ain't right. This is the way it should look like. Also, something else I want to note. The later model 2.8s, which... Sucks that they, I mean, it's a good thing they changed it, but it sucks the, the older ones didn't do this. You see the style is different. The old pan actually sits flush to the block, and the timing cover does sit with it uh, just a bit. But there's no bolts that actually bolt to the timing cover. It sits flush with the old pan. You can actually buy a really good brand of uh, old pan gaskets for these. They don't come in cork. Uh, like the older style. The older style only has cork or rubber. And both of those suck. Because they both leaked. You can never get them to seal right. These, however, seal a lot better. Still got the same design about the water jackets, these two bolts. But 
it's a lot better design as far as sealing wise. So then you come over to this guy, you see the same thing. The head and the intake is flush. There's no uh, gasket sticking out at all between either one of them. So whatever gasket is on that other engine, I don't know. I don't know if that's stock. I don't know if that's one of those that you cut to fit type of thing. I don't know. And I've never seen one that sticks out like that. That's something different. So it could be another reason why it failed. So this truck has about uh, 60 PSI cold, which is really good. And that's with just 10W30 and some zinc oil additive for the uh, flat type of cam and lifters. It's, uh, you know, they don't have zinc additives anymore in your oil. Especially when after this is mixed like it has, you want to make sure that you got the best protection you can for it. So I don't screw up the bearings. So I've already changed the oil once. And I'll clip that video down below real fast. So you can check that out. As well as I'll throw in the bore scope. I took all the plugs out, checked the cylinder walls and everything. Everything still has its cross hatching like it's supposed to have. The plugs are black, so it's running rich. Got to fix that, but that's carburetor related. And it could be also the intake leaking as well. And some other vacuum leaks that I'd fixed, like the EGR valve that should have never been on there. Main reason I put a uh, oil pressure gauge on it was because when I got this truck to move it from where the Eurosport's sitting to over here, the oil light came on. That concerned me a bit. I was a little worried. In fact, it was actually the oil pressure switch that was bad. It was leaking. It was soaked with oil. And once I threw this mechanical gauge on there, right back the oil pressure came. So it also does have AC. I've already taken all that stuff off so I could actually look and get to everything a lot more. Because with that AC in the way, you can't get to anything. All right, here's the moment of truth. What's going to come flying out of this thing? First time changing the oil. It's milky, but it's not that bad. Definitely needs to be changed. So, all right, already knocked it loose. Hopefully, all of it goes in the pan. Ooh, that's not what you want to see. That is some nasty, nasty milkshake. And that is pretty dang thick. Way thicker than I thought. Now it might have some additives in it. I don't know. Well, <clears throat> it's been about 30 some minutes later. Probably more than that. Um, you can see the line. How thick it was. And how much it was filling up. It's definitely overfilled. That was one thing. And uh, it was completely milkier. Way more than I ever thought that it was. By showing on the dipstick. Um... So right now it's clear. I have flushed it with uh, one quart of transmission fluid and uh, two other quarts of oil. Just trying to wash it out of the uh, bottom of the pan itself. Uh, trying to get as much as I can out of it without having to remove anything. Because you cannot on these S10s, especially if it's 2.8, there's no room to drop the pan. The whole engine has to come out. There's n absolutely no room. Um, and I'm not even going to mess with even trying to do that. So, so we got it in cylinder two <clears throat> and there's this gap. It looks like a chunk missing out of the piston, but it looks like it's shaped that way. Oh man, cannot aim this thing right at all. The cylinder walls still have the cross hatching. So... I don't think this thing has too many miles on it at all. There it is. If I can get the stupid camera to pick it up. There we go. Something I was worried about when I first seen it. When I stuck it in. Never seen that before. I guess that's normal. This piston, piston one, uh, cylinder one, has this tin on it. I'm guessing that would mean, or no, that's not cylinder one, that's uh, cylinder three. I'm guessing that means it's bored over tin. That would be my guess. Let's try that one.
Still got the cross hatching on the cylinder walls. Every one of these look about the same. There ain't nothing different in them. So now you've seen the uh, oil change video, you can kind of see how nasty and milky the oil really was. And also the uh, bore scope in each one of the cylinders. I still think that it's been bored over 10. I still believe this is a crate motor because it still has that black colored finish. And it's not like something from a spray paint from a regular person spray painting it. As you can see what I'm talking about. Very clean. And something else I want to note real fast. Every one of the 2.8s have a casting right here that says GM with a big old square. And it'll say 2.8 with a bunch of numbers that you could look up. All that type of thing. This one doesn't have that at all. I can't find any numbers at all on this engine block to tell what it is. Nor to even know if it's actually a 3.4 or a 3.1. However... Uh, the 3.4 didn't come out until about 93 in the Camaros that was real wheel drive. And the 3.1 didn't come out until about 1990. So, I mean, it could be that. Uh, I don't know. There's no numbers, like I said, at all on this engine block. And I'll show you what I'm talking about. So, back at this one again, the 92. You see it says GM. It's supposed to say 2.8 right after this. It's on this block somewhere. I know it is because I've seen it. So, you need to come over here. You see what I'm talking about. You see the numbers on the block. You see the GM stamp. 2.8. Looks like a G code. Yeah, G code. 2.8. need to look up those numbers. I need to figure out how to do that and look it up. But it's right above the engine mount. So you see the same thing. I don't understand why the other engine doesn't have that. It's just kind of weird. That's why I always think, you know, maybe it's crate motor, which is probably more likely what it is. Who knows what happened to the old one. So real quick, I'll show you the whole truck. Just how beautiful it really is. Everything's been gone through on this as well, from front to back, top to bottom. Aftermarket wheels, disc brakes, in the front, uh, got slotted rotors actually. Aftermarket tail lights, brand new bumper, paint job. I like this uh, bed liner type of deal on top of the bed. I wanna do the same thing to my truck. See the slotted rotors. Brake hoses, calipers, bearings, ball joints, tie rods, suspension, shocks, everything has been done. Tires. She got aftermarket seats in her. I love those seats, actually. Tried to get them from him, but somebody's already got their hands on them, so uh, I'll find me another set. No radio, no interior lights. Kind of odd, uh, but it has AC. Door panels are aftermarket. They've got these uh, door card pockets at the bottom. I actually kind of want that on mine. I love this stitching that it has. It's leather covered stitching. Kind of actually mushy and plush to it. The dash has the uh, dash cover on it. So I'm assuming it was probably cracked underneath. But I mean it looks good. I really love it. I actually do dig the... Uh, it has this gold finish to it. I like that better than the black that I painted on mine. So I went ahead and I cleaned this up for him, you know, just because being good friends with him, for helping me out, giving me a deal for this, and I uh, figured why not. I had a new vacuum cleaner, and I said, well, I'll give it a good try and clean this thing up for him. So I cleaned the dash, the seats, the carpet, flooring, everything, just kind of give it a once over. I also dig that steering wheel, wouldn't mind having that on mine. The, uh, another something else, this has a six digit odometer, so it actually shows 238,000 miles, that's a lot of mileage for one of these, I'm sure that's not what's on the engine itself, uh, but I definitely do want that cluster, or the speedometer, so I can put it in mine, and then reset it to 146,000, so I can keep up the mileage with my truck, something else that's crazy, you know, trying to get this thing to go and drive was a pain, uh, to move it uh, Kept going back and forth, you know trying to hit it to get it and go and drive It would go in reverse and park in neutral, but you couldn't feel drive at all It would just hit the column and that was it so I had to come under the hood Block the front wheel with a block while it's running come underneath here shove it into drive And then finally you felt it slowly hit into drive. I'm assuming that the transmission fluid is low. It does have a leak both of the cooler lines that go to the radiator at the transmission are leaking pretty bad. The uh, transmission pan's all wet. 
and the uh, speedometer seal is shot just like it is on my truck so it's leaking so you can kind of see everything how the transmissions all wet the uh, cooler lines leak so I have to tighten those up a little bit if I'm gonna keep running it before I pull it tail shelf's how seal is leaking that's not a big deal you can see the headers on both sides, true dual exhaust, all the way back. And the muffler's set at an angle, so it does trap a lot of water inside. And uh, when it's running, it throws a lot of water out of the exhaust at times. Starter does need to be shimmed. Probably won't do it um, until it's out of the truck. You can still see the milkiness for the second time, the change in the oil, because it mixed again when I added coolant, trying to test to see where the leak was. One of the bolts for the transmission bell housing that goes to the blocks missing, and the one right there was falling out. I had to get in there and tighten that one back. It was literally just a hair of falling on the ground, losing that bolt. I don't know if the speedometer works, but the way that's kinked, I doubt that even works at all. Who knows? You can also see the coolant leaking off of the bottom of the transmission. So definitely intake manifold is uh, seeping. Another thing, too, I thought I had a bad starter. So I went to go put the battery in it to uh, move it from over there to here. And it wouldn't start. It kept smoking at the battery terminals. Come to find out, this little wire that's hooked up for ground is actually supposed to be hooked up back here uh, on the uh, radiator support. But it's hooked up over here because of the aftermarket headlights and everything else with the relays. So I kept fooling with that, finally got it to start. I figured it was the starter, but it actually wasn't. It would turn over, but it was like very, very slow. It was like with a weak battery. Tried another battery, still kept doing the same thing, but not a big deal. It's just a battery terminal problem or cable. And the reason it's messing up is uh, for the shifters because it's actually hitting the header down there. So the header's going to have to be smashed down some at that area whenever I swap it all so my shifter doesn't hit. I don't quite think it's that long like this one. And he probably didn't have that issue before because the bushings wore out now. And I'm assuming that's... And that, damn, that wasn't even all the way in park. That's kind of dangerous. But, yeah. So, the next video you're going to see, as soon as everything gets in that I've ordered for it, uh, I've already got the intake manifold gaskets. That took a few days. And I'm waiting on the timing cover gaskets. It's supposed to be here today. I still got to get a water pump. <clears throat> a couple things for it. I actually do want to paint the intake and the timing cover and stuff off. Why it's off. Because once it goes on and it's actually fixed, I don't want to have to remove it again to paint it. I want to go ahead and do it now and get it over with. So whenever it's swapping, it's pretty much taking it out of this truck, turn around, stick it in the other one, and driving it. So I'll go ahead and uh, throw the other video in of this thing running because I'm sure a lot of you want to hear what this thing sounds like. It sounds really, really good. A lot of people are going to get fooled and think it's a V8 until you actually get on it and take it down the road. That's what I've heard from him, but we'll see. I'd love to drive this truck at least to be able to tell how the transmission shifts after fixing the coolant and oil mixture. I really don't want to do that because it's his truck. You know, it's really nice. I'm afraid to even get close to it or even touch it. Every time that I'm working on it, i got a towel or a, uh, I've actually got a mechanics cover that I lay on the fenders and stuff that, so I don't scratch it. Because the truck's beautiful, you know, and the paint's not cheap to fix. So, but anyway, I uh, just want to clarify real quick that if the truck were to blow up tomorrow, or if I swap it and it locks up or throws a bearing, I'm not going to blame him. I'm not going to be mad at him. Because I already knew, and I've already ran it with the mixing oil. I've already changed it, and I dumped coolant in it to see how it would do, and it mixed it again. So if it was a spun a bearing tomorrow, I would not be mad. I've got another engine on a stand waiting to be put in. However, that is a TBI V6, and if I swapped it, I would want to stay with TBI. I kind of wanted to get away from carbureted, but I'm waiting. I need a wiring harness and a few other things to make that work in order to turn it into a TBI. I could probably do it with this one as well, but like I said, I still need a few parts. So uh, I'll go ahead and link that video in and uh, let you check that out.